The Atlanta Braves will likely make a trade or two during the 2023 season. Who are some prospects that could be dealt in those moves and who are some prospects the Braves should absolutely not trade? And that's what we'll be discussing on this Miners Monday episode of Lockdown Braves. So let's get into it. You are Locked On Braves, your daily Atlanta Braves podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, and welcome back to Lockdown Braves, part of Lockdown Sports Atlanta, where we cover your favorite Atlanta sports teams each and every day. I am your host, Jake Mastriani. You can follow me on Twitter at shortstopball. Also, check out my website, shortstopball.com. You can check out my written work on the Atlanta Braves over at Braves Today. Make sure you follow the podcast on Twitter at Lockdown underscore Braves. Send in any questions, comments, or feedback that you have for the podcast. I try to make this podcast as interactive as possible using your Twitter comments on the show during the show as well we usually do live episodes as well but this will not be one of those and thanks as always for making lockdown braves your first listen of each and every day we post episodes daily five days a week monday through friday we're free and available on all platforms we're available on youtube as well uh, if you would please subscribe there hit the thumbs up button on this video you can also follow me on twitch at twitch t- twitch.tv slash shortstop ball where i'll be going live throughout the season as i'm watching braves games playing it'll be the show if you want to come join us over there i've done several of those now and it's been a lot of fun on today's episode we're going to talk about prospects that could be traded this season and prospects the braves should not trade unless absolutely necessary before we get into all that though i want to remind you that today's episode is brought to you by ultimate baseball gm If you've ever dreamed of becoming an MLB GM like Alex Anthopoulos and managing your own baseball franchise, then this game is definitely for you. To download the game, just visit ultimatebaseballgm.com or look it up on the app stores. Our listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo code LOCKEDON in all caps in the game. All right, should be an exciting episode. I love doing this every year. It's usually uh, one of my better performing shows of every season. I like to talk about the prospects the Braves are likely to trade during the season if they need to make a move and prospects that I think they should avoid trading if at all possible. We're going to comment later that's going to talk about really kind of where I am. There's not a prospect in this system that I deem untradeable. There are guys who I really like and I don't want them to trade. But there's not necessarily anybody I wouldn't trade. But the group of guys we're going to talk about in this first list here, these are players who, if the Braves need to make a minor move, they need to make a a small upgrade somewhere. These are players who I think Alex Anthopoulos and the Braves will look to trade. Um, A lot of this comes from an area of depth with pitching as well. And I think that's where the Braves have done a great job. They always have some pitching that is available to be traded and this doesn't mean that i don't like any of these guys either i just think some of them are blocked and i think some of them could be pitching in other rotations and and with other teams at this point i think the braves just don't have room for some of these players so uh, again i don't want it to make it sound like i don't like any of these guys Uh, i'm very fond of a few of them but they are players that i think could be dealt Um, sometime this season, whether the trade deadline or before, if the Braves need to make an upgrade somewhere. The first on that list for me is Bryce Elder. And this is one of those guys who, again, I really like Bryce Elder. And if you've heard me on the podcast for a while, you know I think he's going to be a solid back of the rotation pitcher for a long time at the big league level, a fourth, fifth starter. But he's somebody that if he were in a lot of other camps this spring training, he would probably be in a big league rotation. But being on the Braves, they just don't have a spot for him right now. And, you know, that's credit to the the depth of the Braves starting rotation and where they're at. It's nothing really Bryce Elder has done. I think he's looked fine in spring training. And I think, you know, he's looked okay, uh, looked really good against the Washington Nationals and Miami Marlins of the Worlds last year. But the Braves just have enough good pitching where he gets bumped out of the starting rotation. Like I said, I think he'd be a fourth or fifth starter and probably 20 other big league rotations. So if there he comes a need, and I like to keep Bryce Elder for the depth. I'm not saying I want to trade him. Again, I like Bryce Elder. But if the Braves need to make a move, say to make an upgrade in the outfield or things just completely fall apart at shortstop, 
I think Bryce Elder is a guy who the Braves could move that could jump into another team's rotation and you know wouldn't necessarily hurt the Braves. It would more so hurt their depth. I think they have plenty of guys who are better than Bryce Elder, but again, not trying to knock on Bryce Elder. I think he'd be a solid back of the rotation arm. The Braves just have a lot of good pitchers to their credit. Uh, Darius Vines, kind of a similar situation. I, I like him, and I think maybe there's a little bit more upside there, but I think he's kind of down the pecking order, so I could see him getting moved. Victor Vodnik, you know, guy with a high upside arm, but he's running out of options and he's running out of time. And again, this would have to be a, a minor move the Braves are trying to make, but we know if Vodnik puts it together, this guy could be a solid setup man in the back of a bullpen. So, Again, I think he could be a likely candidate if a team wants to to bet on the upside of Vodnik, again, in a small move for a role-type player. These are not big trade pieces that we're talking about, but these are guys that I could see getting dealt in that typical kind of Alex Anthopoulos, you know, trade deadline type, type move where he takes a guy, you know, Eddie Rosario was on the scrap heap. They give up pa Pablo Sandoval for Eddie Rosario. I mean, you know, the Adam Duvall, even the Jorge Soler trade, uh, where he traded for Adam Duvall the first time from Cincinnati, which I know he gave up, you know, Lucas Sims, who was a former first round pick in that. But, you know, Alex Anthopoulos has done a great job of making these kind of moves for veterans who have been good in the past, but are maybe having down years. And he's, you know, given up very little for it and gotten good returns for the most part. You know, these are the type of trade pieces that I think could be dealt in those types of moves. Tanner Gordon, another one in arm, just, you know, getting lost in the system. And then Tyler Tolby, he's the one up bat that I put on here. Braves really can't afford to trade many bats at this point, but I think Tyler Tolby, just because you know he could move positions, he could ultimately become you know backup first base DH type player. But if he is going to stay at catcher, I think the Braves you know just drafted Drake Baldwin, who I think they're very high on. Sean Murphy's going to be here for a while, so it could become that Tyler Tolby is just blocked. I do like him again. <laughs> These players I'm talking about, I do like a lot of them. I just think some of them are blocked, and you're going to make trades. You have to trade somebody. So these are the first names that kind of came to my mind. And in this list that I'm putting together, I'm going basically uh, strictly off of MLB Pipeline's top 30 list are the names that I'm looking at. So when I go down that list, these are guys that I could see tr being traded just because you know they're blocked at the major league level for the most part and are somewhat – expendable but again none of these guys are going to bring back brian reynolds none of these guys are going to get a great return if you were going to get a great return you would probably trade the guys that i'm going to talk about next all right i talked told you about them again at the top ultimate pro baseball gm everyone is always looking for a great fantasy game to see how they would do as the gm of a baseball team and i have the app that you're looking for if you go to baseball, um, if you go to uh, probaseballgm.com right now or scan the code to look it up in the app, st app stores, that's probaseballgm.com, Ultimate Baseball GM. A Lockdown Braves listeners get a 100% free boost to their franchise when using the promo code Locked On in the game store. So make sure that you check it out. What you can do with this app, it's a lot of fun. A lot of the Locked On hosts, um, are doing this uh, a league together and it's been a ton of fun, but it lets you manage your own professional baseball franchise to try and build a world series champion. Who doesn't want to do that? And it's so detailed. You can manage every strategic aspect of your team, play through a season and see how you do. It's, it's been hit or miss for a lot of the hosts uh, so far on locked on, but hiring the right coaches and staff, managing team finances, scouting, drafting players, managing difficult personalities, navigating your franchise through free agency, all the ups and downs of a season. If you want to go through that and get an idea of what it's like to be a real GM, then you got to go check out the Ultimate Baseball GM app. It's a ton of fun. And again, when you use the promo code locked on in all caps, make sure you write locked on in all caps, one word, you get a 100% free boost to your franchise. So visit probaseballgm.com today or look at uh, look it up in the app store to get started. All right, moving along in our discussion of prospects that could be traded and now we're going to take a look at prospects that shouldn't be traded in my opinion if you can avoid it. And a lot of these are recent draft picks, but these are all guys that I'm very high on. Owen Murphy, AJ Smith Shaver, 
uh, J.R. Ritchie, who if you're watching on YouTube, I left off of this list, but certainly throw him in there as well. Cole Phillips, Spencer Schwellenbach, Ambioris Tavares. I left my guy Ignacio Alvarez off this list initially, but I think you can certainly throw him in there. It's players that I think could have a big impact at the major league level one day. Now, if you're going to make a trade for a Brian Reynolds, you're going to make some sort of big move, then you're going to have to include these players. And again, as I said at the top, if you're going to make that type of deal, there's not a player on the Braves that I think is untouchable. There's not an Acuna. There's not you know, a Spencer Strider or a Michael Harris in recent years that I just would not trade because I think they're going to be all-star level players. That's not to say that any of these guys on here I don't think could be that but it's not as much of a certainty right now as it was with some of those other prospects that I've deemed untouchable in the past. But I do like these guys, and I would try to avoid trading them if you can. But again, if a big deal comes up and it takes one, two of these players, I wouldn't hesitate to pull the trigger if it's somebody who you're going to have a lot of control over. Like I wouldn't trade any of these guys unless at minimum you had two years of control and an all-star level talent coming back in return. That's how highly I think of a lot of these players. So that's who I wouldn't trade again if you could if you could avoid it. Now comes to, here comes the discussion and I know Grissom's not a prospect anymore, but with the battle currently going on at shortstop, it has led a lot of people to think, okay, well whoever doesn't win the job is a trade asset. And that's that's true in a sense for sure. But my take on this and what I've been very clear on is if Von Grissom doesn't w win the role at shortstop, he still has a ton of value for this Braves team going forward. And I said this last year when we all thought, or I thought anyway, that Dansby Swanson was going to resign and come back as a shortstop. At that point, I said, I hope they don't trade Von Grissom because I think his bat's going to play and I think he's going to be an above average hitter. And I think he has the ability to move into a Chris Taylor utility role type if you could you know, work him into the outfield. And I'm not giving up on him at shortstop either. I've been very clear about that. He's only 22 years old. He has time to develop. And we don't even know that he's lost the shortstop job. I'm just trying to get out in front of this and say if he doesn't win that job, that the Braves should not just automatically trade him. Again, unless it's for a big piece of Ryan Reynolds type of move. But I still think there is a role for Vaughn Grissom going forward. Again, you can move him into that super utility type role, let him play in a bunch of different positions where he gets four or five starts at week. And you have the DH now, well, which I think could be a very good spot for Vaughn Grissom if he doesn't win the shortstop job and if he doesn't continue to make improvements there defensively. Not that I think he's bad. I, I'm, I'm a little self-conscious now because people think I all of a sudden hate Vaughn Grissom. That is not the case. I love Von Grissom, and I've been very uh, vocal in saying that even last year, if he doesn't win the shortstop job, that he is a very valuable piece to this team because I think he goes into that Chris Taylor type of role. And the same for Shoemake. Uh, look, you would have asked me three weeks ago even, I would have said Braden Shoemake's probably traded this year. I don't think he's on the, in the Brave system at the end of the season. But I have changed 180 on that to say where you cannot trade Braden Shoemake now because you know if you've been listening to the podcast one of my biggest worries coming into the season is middle infield depth I feel like we didn't have any now I feel pretty great about it because you have a good situation with Grissom and Shoemake and again Grissom has done nothing to lose the job at shortstop it's the fact that Shoemake has just been unbelievable he's had a great spring training and yes it's 30 at bats it's three to four weeks of spring training so you don't want to put too much stock into it but how he's looked defensively just so the actions are so smooth I know he made an error on Sunday but you know just watching him and I couldn't watch Sunday's game but just watching him he just looks smooth defensively out there at shortstop and he's starting to show some promise with the bat as well so now I feel much better about the Braves middle infield depth you have Grissom, you have Shoemake, you have Arcia. Uh, it's it's looking a lot better. You potentially have Luke Waddell and Cal Conley in the minor leagues as well. So I wouldn't trade either one of them. I wouldn't trade Grissom or Shoemake. Whoever loses that job, I think you continue to develop them either as in some type of utility role. So I wouldn't trade either one of them. Long-winded way of saying I keep both of them. I think there's an opportunity and a place for both of them on this team going forward. 
Now, looking at Twitter responses, I asked you, and I apologize, I didn't give a lot of time to answer uh, this one, but Bean, uh, Bean Eater Buzz says he would trade Cal Conley, and I think that's, I think he's also a very good trade candidate as well. That was a name that I thought of. Should not trade J.R. Ritchie, and yeah, I think they're definitely going to want to hang on to their, their two top picks and Cole Phillips from last draft. Skylar Hyde says Darius Vines is an interesting pitcher who may have value as a trade chip. I agree with that. As I put Vines on this list again, I, I think Vines perhaps has a little bit of upside and maybe that intrigues another team in a solid trade that the Braves can make. Um, and Skylar also says, had my eye on Rodri Munoz and would not trade him. So I know Munoz was in camp. I think he did good in the limited action that he had. So yes, an interesting arm there as well. A young arm who may move to the bullpen at some point, but, uh, an interesting arm for sure with Munoz. Uh, Caleb Koo says trade Vines. So there's another one for Vines and then should not be traded Schuster. Um, yeah, I think I didn't mention Schuster or Dodd. Now, again, I don't want this to sound like I don't like either one of these guys, but if a trade came up and you needed to move one of them and let's say, you know, Soroka comes back and he takes hold of that rotation spot, Ian Anderson starts to figure it out and, all of a sudden you feel really good about that depth in the rotation and Dodd and Schuster get pushed out just by the mere fact that there's too many good pitchers at the Bra in the Braves starting rotation, then maybe you can trade from that area of depth and, and trade a Schuster or a Dodd. I like both of them. I, I gave ceilings of the number three starter for both of them. So I wouldn't want to do that. But again, in the right trade, the right piece, right package, I would move just about any Braves prospect that we have and that kind of leads us to our last comment here from jay goldie 03 who says who i think gets traded bryce elder i think bryce elder is the number one candidate to get traded this season and then jay goldie says who i think they shouldn't trade no one nobody in this current farm system is untouchable if a good trade is made available and i could not agree more with jay goldie there as much as i like a lot of these prospects you can go back listen to my top 10 prospect list for the braves there's several guys on here I'm very high on from AJ Mishover, uh, Mishover, Cole Phillips. Um, you know, there's guys in here I really like, Ignacio Alvarez. But none of these guys, in my opinion, are untouchable prospects in the right move. As I detailed earlier, you'd have to be getting a player back with multiple years of control who's an all-star type of talent for me to want to trade one of those players. But again, as, as Jay Goldie points out, there's nobody in this farm system that is completely untouchable in the right trade and that's exactly how i feel as well all right had some good games over the weekend braves are getting hot if you care about spring training stats and wins uh braves had a good weekend including schuster and dodd who are battling for that fifth spot neither one of them took a step back and they're making this decision a lot more difficult on brian snicker we'll talk about those games here and next The tournament is heating up, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because new cu customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. And then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and threes drained. Sorry, Kansas fans. That was a, a tough one over the weekend. That was maybe the only game of the week, March Madness game of the weekend I watched, and certainly was a tough one for you. Um, plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same-game parlay. So don't miss the chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Also, if you have a gambling gambling problem, please visit FanDuel.com slash play safe for tools and resources to help you stay in control of the way you play. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. All right, like I said, it was a good weekend from the Atlanta Braves. Had some good wins and had some good performances, particularly on the mound. And in Friday's game, it was Jared Schuster's first turn in the rotation, knowing that it's him and Dodd battling for that fifth starter spot, went on the road and had a really good performance against the Red Sox. Four innings, three hits, one walk, no earn, and seven strikeouts all spring. It seemed like Dodd has been the more dominant of the two starters, but in their most recent starts, including Dodd's on Sunday, which was really good, Schuster had the, the better swing and miss stuff. So 
again, it's a really tough decision. Decision. Uh, Schuster looked really good. Also, uh, in Friday's game, Nick Anderson, I don't know how you leave him off the roster. And, and Mark Bowman had a good point in his opening, opening day roster predictions. The Braves could technically start the year with four, just four starters and nine bullpen arms, leaving a path for Nick Anderson to get on there. But you know, then by that fifth game, you're going to need to add a starter to the roster and somebody has to go. But Nick Anderson on Friday, two innings, showing he can go multiple innings, no hits, one walk, no earn, just the one strikeout. Would like to see a couple more strikeouts there, but still another solid outing from Nick Anderson. The bullpen in general over the weekend was really good, which, again, I don't put much stock into bullpen results in spring training, but they had been really bad, even from most of the Braves regulars, including you know, A.J. Minter, Rysel Iglesias, and some of their more recent outings. But the bullpen was great over the weekend. Uh, Jimenez finally had a clean outing, which was nice to see. Kirby Yates walked batter but struck out the side. Lucas Litke struck out the side on Saturday as well. And then in Sunday's game, the pitching tossed a shutout, only allowing two hits with three walks and eight strikeouts. That included Max Fried's great performance. On Sunday, he went six and a third innings, gave up just one hit, two walks, nowhere in five strikeouts in 68 pitches. So uh, Max Freed is ready if there were any concerns, and I don't know why there would be. Max Freed is ready to go. McHugh, an inning and a third. Tonkin, a third of an inning. And Dylan Lee, one inning, followed Max Freed in Sunday's brilliant outing on the mound. Just great pitching over the weekend from the Braves, so you love to see that. I tweeted out the other day that the Braves were like, Last in the next to last in the league in bullpen ERA. I think they were 19th in the league in starting pitching ERA this spring training. And those two stats will not last once the regular season gets here. I think we're starting to see that with some of the performances this past weekend. If you missed the Matt Olson home runs on Friday, I know we posted an article on Braves today about it that has links to the videos, but go back and check those out. That guy is ready to go, but he hit two absolute tanks. On fr and Friday's game, um, Ozzy Albies and Marcelo Zuna starting to heat up as well over the last week. Ozzy now has three homers, uh, I think, in the last week. Ozuna had a three-run homer on Sunday as well. He's his average is up to 273 in spring training, so he's starting to get going. It's great for those two guys who are a little slow coming into spring training, seeing those bats heat up. Uh, as far as some news from over the weekend. Big update on Michael Soroka. He threw a two-inning line bullpen on Friday without issues. Great to hear. David O'Brien of The Athletics said that he was up to 93 miles per hour, and his average forcing fastball velocity before the injuries was 93 miles per hour. So good to see him getting that velocity back. Not somebody who completely relies on velocity, but a ton of movement on his pitches. Um, but certainly good to see that, that velo up there. Acuna and Rosario will be returning as both Puerto Rico – Puerto Rico and Venezuela were knocked out of the World Baseball Classic. What a game on Saturday night, by the way. If you didn't check out USA versus Venezuela, um, I, I know some people are out on the World Baseball Classic, and I hate the injuries. Altuve um, had a fractured thumb. Obviously, what happened with Edwin Diaz. But the World Baseball Classic is a lot of fun to watch. And Saturday's game, Trey Turner, of course, I can say former Braves pitcher, uh, with a grand slam to come back and win that game. Just an electric atmosphere there and a really fun game. But Acuna and Rosario will be returning to camp, and I'm excited about that, getting those two back. Snicker said Rosario will probably play on Monday. Maybe we'll see Acuna later in the week. And then some more interesting comments from Snicker over the weekend. Something we've known and talked about on here for a while, but he did say that it is a shortstop battle between Shoemake and Von Grissom. And Grissom has now gone five days without playing at shortstop, and I think that's pretty significant. And Mark Bowman, in his latest opening day lineup prediction, has Shoemake as the Braves' shortstop. So it's really, do you prefer offense or do you prefer the defense at shortstop is what it comes down to. And what we know about the Braves, they really rely on that defense, up the middle defense. So I think that favors Shoemake for sure. Grissom has done nothing to lose this job, and I think he's gotten better defensively, but, but Shoemake is – Pretty clearly um, the better defender at this point. So would not surprise me, but it's going to be really interesting to see over the last week or so. This is our last full week of spring training before opening day. So it's coming. We're going to talk about storylines the, the rest of the week, and then we'll have another mailbag on Friday. So let me know what your biggest storyline 
of the upcoming season is for the Atlanta Braves because that's what we'll be discussing over the next three days. But that will do it for this episode of Locked on Braves. Thanks for making Locked on Braves your first listen of each and every day. Again, we'll be back tomorrow talking about some of the biggest storylines for the upcoming season. So make sure you're subscribed on YouTube uh, so you can get a notification when that is posted and when I go live recording that episode. Again, thanks for making Lockdown Braves your first listen. Now make your second listen to Lockdown MLB Prospects podcast, where host Lindsey Crosby talks about the biggest and brightest stars of tomorrow. Again, thanks for listening. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Lockdown underscore Braves. You can follow me at Shortstop Ball. Also, make sure that you rate, review, and subscribe to the Lockdown Braves podcast wherever you get your podcast. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Go follow me over on Twitch as well. We'll have a lot of fun there during the season. But again, that will do it for this episode, and we will talk to you next time.